Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode. This is the second episode of Season 3 and episode number 38 in the series as well. Lots to get through today, some more transfer business and also our season opener in the Premier League plus our first ever Champions League game with our Terriers in the playoffs. So loads and loads and loads of stuff to get through, let's not ramble on. Uh, but to recap the last episode, very briefly, uh, you guys would have seen us start the new season where we pulled off our biggest signing ever in the series so far by quite some distance. We smashed a club record transfer fee uh, to bring in the Brazilian winger Malcolm uh, from Bordeaux for £37 million and he scored on his debut, non-competitively of course. We beat Celta Vigo in the pre-season final by four goals to one to win it for the third straight year and he did score a lovely goal as well. So yeah, that was basically the last episode in a nutshell and again in today's episode you will see hopefully some more trans business. Liverpool away, our season opener and then RB Salzburg away in the first leg of our Champions League playoff and by the way, look at the start of the season we have got. We are really up against it right from the first game. Liverpool away, RB Salzburg away, Chelsea away, second leg of that playoff against RB Salzburg at home, then Newcastle at home, Manchester United away, Everton at home, and then Spurs away as well. Plus, we get through our playoff, our first Champions League games in the group stage as well. I mean, seriously, man, the fixture list is not kind to us to start the season off. But uh, yeah, let's get straight to it today. Lots to get through. You know, normally when people say, let's get straight to it, they mean rapid up in about 15 seconds and get straight on with the episode. For me, it takes about a minute and a half. But uh, anyway, uh, we have some prize money here from winning the preseason tournament, an extra 2.9 mil going into our budget. Delighted with that. The border, of course, very happy with our win once more. Uh, so there's around 9 million pounds in our budget right now. Of wage budget alteration, we're probably looking at around 8.5 mil, maybe 8 to 8.5 mil in our budget right now. Not much remaining. I still have some targets on my shortlist, but I did say in the last episode after signing Malcolm, he'd probably be the only signing we make in the summer window. However, I, I still have a couple of targets on my shortlist, so maybe we could pull off one or two. But uh, for the most part, I'm just, I'm just look, liking how the team's looking right now. It's really, really good. But also as well, in the last episode, uh, you guys would have seen us qualifying for the Champions League playoffs, and I gave my brief explanation as to why I thought that was. Lots of you guys were keen to let me know in the comment section down below that because Spurs uh, won the Champions League, as Stoke putting a bit here for uh, left-back Scott Malone, which I think we'll accept as that contract in the uh, in the summer. Um, lots of you guys were keen to let me know that because uh, Spurs won the Champions League, that means that fifth place in the Premier League, which was us, we're going to the Champions League. I wasn't sure that's how it works because Spurs did finish as winners of the Premier League last year. So I thought it would just be the top four qualifying for the Champions League and then winning the CL would mean nothing. But that's what you guys seem to think was right. So you guys are probably right. You know, I'm not really as smart as when it comes down to this sort of stuff, European qualification. So maybe you guys are right. But uh, Rob Elliott has gone to Newcastle as well. It's our first sale at the window. And a bit here for Marcus Edwards. Uh, Crystal Palace want to take him for 9.2 mil. But we're going to say no. Even though Edwards last season wasn't amazing in his debut year for us, he's only 20 years old, 74 rated, super good potential. He's going nowhere. And a bid here for Tom Ince, and it comes from Bordeaux as well. What an interesting bid this one is. Uh, 7.6 mil. We just signed their right winger, Malcolm. They want to take ours for £30 million less, or £29.4 million less. My maths is getting better. Uh, so I think we'll negotiate, try and get a little bit more cash out of the French side. Um, but then again, he's out of contract in the summer. Don't want to see them pull out. Do you know what? Take him, take him. I won't negotiate, you can take him. 7.6 mil, that's fine. And now we are finally getting bids for our players on the transfer list as well. Ipswich want to take Sabiri uh, to Portman Road for £800,000. Totally fine with me. Uh, Sabiri was out on loan last year at Cholton, I do believe. But this guy on the transfer list, we've got no plans to use him in the future either. So he can go. Totally fine with me. So we won't get a great deal for the sales of Sabiri and Malone. But uh, if Ince does go, that'll give us a bit of a cash. However... Scott Malone has gone to Stoke, but there's a bid here for Moses, and how much is this going to be? It's... Wow, really? I mean, seriously? 12 million? You know, I tell you what, man, like, I love career mode, I think we all do, but the unrealistic transfer fees just blow my mind how stupid they are. Look, I know his valuation seems to suggest he's only worth about 14.5 mil, but come on now, like 12 million, really? Do you think I'm going to accept that? 23 goals last season, our player of the year by far, your fans player of the year as well. Unbelievable debut year in the Premier League, Golden Boot winner, 12 million pounds. Now we can negotiate, and the chief exec seems to suggest we get around 30.8 million pounds for the guy, but in my opinion, he's still worth more than that. He's still worth way more than that. So Dortmund, get lost, man. That's a silly bid. We're never going to accept that. Moses goes nowhere. When I said I was wondering whether we'd cash in on him this season, uh, as Norwich putting a bid here for Andre Green, 
uh, of 11.5 mil. But of course, he's going nowhere because he's a very good, talented winger. Um, I, I was talking about, you know, getting a cash sum of around 35 to 40 million pounds, which I might, you know, be tempted to accept. But 12 million pounds, I think that's a little bit lower than I was thinking. But anyway, Ince has gone to Bordeaux. So we sign their winger and we sell ours to them. So doing some nice business with a French club here as, uh, as Ince goes to uh, to France. And I'm totally fine with that because uh, that means now in our budget, as uh, Sabiri's transfer talks have broken down, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, in our budget right now, you'll see we are now up to, what, that'd be about 15 million pounds, perhaps 15 million, 16.7 million pounds in our budget. So got a little bit more money to work with now. That's great. I'll go into my shortlist in a moment to see if there's someone I want to sign. But first, an academy update. And let's take a look at our young prospects. Uh, look at this six foot seven Nigerian right back, Dennis Laval. Uh, looks amazing. Uh, Shigari looks quite good as well. There's some, oh, look at these Nigerian youth talents, man. There's some really good ones in here, aren't there? Uh, Max Hendricks looks fantastic as well. Only 15, but 60 overall with some solid potential. Uh, I'm going to release August Svensson, though, because we need the creme de la creme. And 80 to 86 potential is good, but we can do better. Uh, Marvin Decker mm, could be all right. Uh, Darlington Adekunde looks quite good, but his overall is quite poor. Lucas Molder, very good, but 5 foot 11 centre-back, not the best. I'm uh, going to release Daniel Lawal as well. Uh, Christian Decker looks all right. Edwin Van der Meer looks good. Dijkstra looks good. And uh, Fudio, all right, but very poor overall. And next up, a loan offer for Lorenzo Sala, who scored that lovely goal in the preseason final. That was his first appearance for the club, and he scored with virtually his first few kicks of the ball. But so he's going to Plymouth on a one-year loan, totally fine with me. He's a decent little young Italian striker with the five-star skills, but 66 rated, shows great potential, but not good enough right now, so we can go on, play, on loan to Plymouth, and that's totally fine with me. Uh, so looking at our shortlist real briefly then, um, it's the same as the last episode, minus Malcolm, who of course we bought. Haven't really changed it that much since season two. And I really do want a new right back, don't get me wrong, but Jao Cancelo we can negotiate with Dortmund, but I don't think we'll be able to afford him for anything less than 30 mil. And at the moment, we've got just over half of that. So I really don't know what to do in this summer window between now and deadline day because like I don't see the point in buying a player that wouldn't go into our first 11. If we are going to spend the money, we want to improve the first 11 because the depth is fine. But I just don't know. Like we, we need a new right back in my opinion. We don't need one, but we could do a new right back in my opinion. But I just, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to do. You guys have been giving me lots of transfer suggestions, but I just don't know what to do. Oh, and Lorenzo Sala has rejected that loan move to Plymouth as well. You know, I saw a comment last episode from someone saying, you've got to loan out some of those youth players, man. You've got too many of them. I know, but it is very difficult to loan out players in this year's CM, at least what I'm finding anyway. And uh, that bid there was accepted, but he rejected the move. That is really annoying. And a pretty interesting bid here, 7th of August, as Leicester, last season finishing in third place, having a great season under Claude Puel, have uh, put in a bid for Diego Reyes of £15.3 million. And uh, what do you think about Claude Puel going to Leicester, by the way? When he's first announced, the Leicester fans weren't too happy about it, but a good start for him. And uh, I don't think he's that bad of a manager, to be honest. But anyway, uh, Leicester putting in a bid here for Diego... <laughs> I go off topic so many times. Leicester putting in a bid here for Diego Reyes of uh, £15.3 million over his valuation. Now, I'm not against selling the Mexican. He had a pretty solid season for us last year alongside Tuansby, but we're going to negotiate and uh, see how much we can squeeze out of the Foxes. So we valued at £15.3 million. I like the look of Jamie Turner and Patrick Collins as young centre-backs. I want to give them some more minutes this season, but I also like Reyes because he's a pretty solid international player with a lot of experience. It's going to go to 27 million pounds. I don't think Leicester are going to say yes to that. I think they're just going to pull out straight away. We'll see what they say anyway. And uh, okay, 19.4 mil. As uh, Craig Shakespeare seems to have got a job here as the Leicester City negotiator. Uh, as he's still part of the club. Uh, 19.4 mil plus that 5% sell-on clause. I'm not really fussed about the sell-on clause. Because I'm going to remove that. But uh, I want to propose a new transfer fee. And try and get him up to... Let's go to 20... I think I'll probably accept 24 mil for the guy. Because um, that'll give us quite a bit of cash to work with. Uh, yeah, okay, 24 million pounds, and we'll see what Leicester say to that. All right, so Leicester are going to say 24 million for Diego Reyes is totally fine. Now, we might regret that because he had a pretty solid first season for us. Nothing amazing, but had a couple of good standout games, particularly in the Manchester City game away from home last year. Um, but 24 mil for a 13 million pound valued player at 26 years old, I'll take that. 
I'll take that and we'll see if he goes or not. And if Reyes does go, we'll probably need a new centre-back. However, I did briefly touch on this pretty much right at the start of the series. Uh, Philip Billing is a defensive midfielder in this team, but I had him my St. Pauli career mode last year and I often played him, well I say often, I sometimes played him as a ball-playing centre-back in this team because he's got some fantastic stats and he's six foot six as well, so a very good aerial presence too. And I'm not against converting this guy to play as a ball-playing centre-back in this team. He's very good on the ball. Again, six Six foot six, technically very good defensively, and uh, you know physically very good as well. 78 strength and some decent little stats there as well. I'm not against having Billing playing in that centre back role alongside Tuansby. He's a left footed player, so it suits that left centre back role as well. I'm I'm not against having that and then putting our new signing Daniel Almaty in the first team as well. That's something to consider. Something to consider. Although well, if Diego Reyes rejects the move, then uh, that will be the end of that. But there is a bid here for Kachunga, and Udinese want to take him for £5.8 million. Uh, but I really don't want to let the guy go. You know, of course, he's, he's like our sixth man of the year, as we call him. Great impact sub off the bench. Um... I, I could sell him because he's out of contract in the summer, but honestly, I'd rather keep him here and then try and give him a one-year deal come the end of that, that uh, year. So, yeah, the tempting offer for a player out of contract in the summer, but no, Kachunga, Kachunga is a great score player, man. I want to keep him here. And so we now have our final two youth scouting uh, reports available as well from Keith and Ian based in Nigeria. Uh, we'll pick up a few more players to our academy before we say goodbye or thanks for their service. Um, who do we want to pick up? We're looking for the creme de la creme nowadays. We've got such a big stacked academy. We can't afford to sign players that are average at best. Uh, he's only got one month scouting. He's only got one month scouting. I want players that have got more than one month scouting so we've got a better understanding of how good they are. Um, we could pick up this guy. He looks very good indeed. 8194 potential, 4961 overall. Sign him to our academy. Uh, should we sign one of those guys? Only one month scouting. We'll leave those guys. We won't gamble on those guys. And that'll do it for Nigeria. And as for the Netherlands, um, see, this is what I mean here. You, you, the, the longer the scout reports go on, the worse the guys tend to look. But he looks very good. Marvin Decker, 5161 overall with 8194 potential. Hoax looks quite good there as well. Uh, De Witt, not quite as good. Vermoulin, okay. Um, but again, we want the, the very best players here. Uh, should, we, should we go for Hoekstra from, uh, from the Netherlands here? Yeah, that'll be our final youth uh, signing, and uh, we'll leave the rest as they are. And I think soon we'll find out whether Diego Reyes is going to go or stay. And there it is. Diego Reyes has been sold to Leicester for 20, was it 23 million pounds? Uh, 24 million pounds. We get 20 million pounds for that sale. It's our biggest sale of the series so far. We might end up regretting that because, again, he had a pretty decent debut season for us. Only the one, like, real standout game I can remember, but pretty decent nonetheless. And, uh, well, that's... That's, that's an interesting sale in today's episode. I was not anticipating that. Now, Alfie Morsa would ordinarily slide in, but I want to play Billing in that centre-back role and see how he could do it. Six foot six, very good in the air. I want to see how he do as a ball-playing centre-back and then putting Daniel Marty into the team as well. So, big sale. Big sale to start off with and hopefully we won't regret it. So, here we go then. First game of the new Premier League season and it is Liverpool here away at Anfield. Very excited for the game. We won here two seasons ago and uh, last year drew 1-1. One, one. So, Hopefully, we'll get the three points in this game and get off to a winning start. Liverpool team very good, though. 4-3-3 three, three with Karius in goal. Henderson, Lalana, and Shiravela, uh, their midfield trio. And up front, Yunus on the left, Marnie on the right, and Edison Cavani as their striker. A very hard team to stop going forward. And as for our team, it's the first game with the experiment, seeing Billing playing centre-back. Uh, Hudson in goal, but for a Sessignon, the great Dane, Tuansby, and Odubajo. Sist on left of our midfield four, Malcolm on the right, Daniel Amati and Moy in the middle, Vitinho Akam. And last year's Golden Boot winner, Moses up top. Let's get a winning start to Season 3. Very excited to see how Billing does get on there. But uh, again, I did use him a couple of times there in my uh, St. Pauli career. And he was totally fine. So hopefully he'll do quite well in the first game of the season. But here's Lallana finding Eunice. The first chance could fall to Liverpool. With Eunice letting fly. And Hudson forced into an early save to his left-hand side. Still 0-0, but first shot on target. I'm sure many today. Trying to be through the gap to Daniel Amati. And Marty looks to roll it inside to Moses. Oh, lovely turn. Lovely turn. Lovely turn. And what a save by Karius. And Malcolm can't turn in a rebound because Andrew Robertson gets a crucial deflection on the header and turns it behind for a corner. Not sure how much the Scottish left back knew about it, but that is a big defensive play that prevents Malcolm from scoring on his Premier League debut and putting us a goal up. And then Daniel Amati hits the bar. And then Karius claims the rebound. So unfortunate not to be leading. Now Mane tackled by Billing with deflection on Sessignon and finds Henderson 
Robertson back to Sadio Mane to as he blocks it straight to Cavani who drills it in at the near post and Liverpool go in front. The Uruguayan fires them into a lead. How annoying is that? Such bad luck. The, uh, the tackle deflected off uh, Sessegnon. Went straight to Mane and he was tackled. Straight to Cavani. And maybe Hudson should do better than near post. But he can't keep it out. 1-0 Liverpool. That, that is so annoying, man. We should be in front. They're still behind. Moy to Billing. And now Billing to Amati. Back towards Aaron Moy. Nice little build up here as uh, uh, Amati gets on the ball. Releases Moses who sets himself and finds the back of the net. Of course he does. Moses Simon gives us the equalising goal. Salutes the away fans as we strike just before the break. 23 goals for the season last year. And here's a question for you guys in the top right. How many goals do you think he'll score this year in the Premier League? I'm going to go with 30. I really do believe we'll get 30. Nice ball through by Daniel Amati. He assist on his PL debut for us and Moses simply doesn't miss. One goal already. What a fantastic start for Moses again. Vote in the top right. How many goals do you think Moses will score this season? And also comment as well the exact amount you think he'll score. I'm, I'm going to go with 30. I'm going to go with 30. It's a bold thing to suggest, but the guy is just so good, man. I absolutely love him. Daddy has got us back on level terms as we go into the break and I'm delighted. Oh, yes, Philip Billing, what a tackle that was on Cavani as uh, Sisto gets on the ball and gets around his man as well. And away goes Pio and Sisto. Lots of space here to cut inside. It's Pio and Sisto. Oh, just wide of the post. The Danes there impressing. What a tackle by Billing. He sent Cavani flying into next week. Got Billing, yours, son, yours. Oh, yes, Philip Billing. Nice little touch on the big guy as uh, Oli Barger finds Twansby. And Billing continues to run there, so I'll pick him out. And he'll give it towards Sessignon. And uh, that was a Marty, sorry, wasn't it? Wasn't, uh, not Billing. But uh, Marty gets it back anyway. And now back to uh, Sisto. Man free out wide is Odubajo. Odubajo to Moy. Working the ball around here. Some nice build up. Moses, scoop turn. Heel to heel flick. Step over. Finish. Oh, just over the bar. Still tied at 1 1. And either side find a winning goal late on here as Twanzby finds Amati. And now through to Kachunga off the bench here. Trying to outpace Andrew Robertson. And he gets away from the former Watford man. Can he cross the wall into the middle? Yes, he can. Deflected. Mounier goes for it. Wins it. And it's Sisto! with a wonderful goal has won it for Huddersfield Town and that was season one Sisto a sensational acrobatic effort and with six and a half minutes to go we've surely come to Anfield and claim the three points that we deserve what a goal cross deflected off Robertson looped into the air Mounier won the ball in the air and what a lovely goal from Pion Sisto to surely win us the game excellent technique carriers can't get anything on it in off the inside of that far post and the Dane might be back to his best what a fantastic goal by Pion Sisto that's got to do it and there it is getting what a win on the opening day for Huddersfield Town Liverpool went in front early for a Cavani goal we responded before the break Moses off the mark last year's golden boot winner giving us the equaliser and then late on Pion Sisto with a bit of magic gives us the three points what a win here at Anfield and, and we were full value for it as well completely full value 12 shots 7 on target a bit more possession as well compared to 2 and 2 for Liverpool we deserve the 3 points and then some man what a great way to start the season and for man the match difficult one because I thought everyone played well really Moses off the mark for the first time Sisto getting a wonderful goal but uh, I think I will give it to Sisto it was just an amazing goal it won us the game a brilliant piece of improvisation and what a win for Huddersfield Town start as you mean to go on a big 3 points Oh my word, what a win that was. And look what comes after the game as well. A bid from Liverpool for Moses of 13.1 million. But Jürgen, hands off. This guy's going to score against you, not score for you. Moses goes nowhere. He is our hero at Huddersfield Town. The guy is going nowhere. And I think after winning that header in the air and setting up the Sisto goal, I'm also going to say to Atletico Madrid, hands off Steve Mounier. We can get quite a lot of money for Mounier. We had a great end of season last year and I'd rather keep him. I'd rather keep him. He's a really good option at six foot three. I want to keep him here. It's a decent bid. We can get quite a bit of money for him, but Mounier staying here. We've got to keep the core squad together, man. We play well as a unit. Let's not disrupt that. And now, so after that big win against Liverpool on the opening day, we now take on RB Salzburg away in Austria for our first ever Champions League game with the Terriers in the first leg of our playoff. Looking forward to the clash. Got an interesting team out there, but hopefully a couple of away goals tonight and a big win for Huddersfield. And this is our team for the game. 4-4-1-1. Morrison goal back for a Jespersen, Morse 
Dawson, Tawansby and Smith the captain with Sister on the left hand side of midfield and Kachunga on the right. The handsome man and Amati start in the middle. Edwards is our count tonight and Moses leaves the line as well. So good team. I expect us to win. We are the favourite. Let's go get a big win here and some away goals too. Come on. The one thing I won't accept from tonight's game is failing to score. You know, away from home. I always say this, away goals are so crucial in European ties. Got to take full advantage and get a couple of goals. But here come Arby Salzburg for first chance here. And a good one too. As the shot comes in and Morris has to beat it away at the near post. Well, I do put us favourites tonight. But RB Salzburg aren't a bad team. A couple of good players like Valentino Lazaro uh, taking this corner. And we've got a guard against their threat. And Morris once again makes a really good save. And Smith hoots it away for a throw. Well, maybe I've underestimated the Austrians. Good start for them. We've not got started at all yet. Oh, what a start for RB Salzburg. A free kick there, which we just about managed to deal with and put it behind for a corner, but this is this is quite worrying, man. They've started off very fast. We've not got started at all, and they've got no, they haven't got. Oh, I thought they got in front. The Boers put it wide. I saw the net bulging, and it must have hit the side netting. Yeah, it did. Just wide the post. Oh my goodness! And you can see the reaction there. We've we've not got started at all, man. Jesperson by Sisto. Now it's a handsome man. A really good play there to release Jesperson. Down the left-hand side. Needs a good cross. That's a good delivery. Kachunga flies in and gives us the lead. What a lovely, lovely build-up. And a great cross by the young Danish fullback Jesperson in the team. And expect to see him a lot this season. I like the look of him. Potential to be special and impressing early on. Nice build-up. Lovely cross of the back stick. And Kachunga, this is why we're not selling the guy. And he'll get a contract come the end yeah. of the year. Six well, man of the year, baby. Always impressing. You know, in the end of season awards, there's been some suggestions from you guys. And of course, we added fans player of the year this year due to your suggestions as to what new awards we could have. I, I think squad player of the year, you know, could be a good it's award good for the future. Squad player of the year. But then again, Kachunga would win it every single season as Edwards is on the ball now. Finds Moses and a chance to really put the pressure on and apply some more. Sisto running through. Fires it wide. That should have been two. Oh, Tommy, yours in the air, son. Yours in the air. Nope, but that's Mawson's ball. He'll find Kachunga. Kachunga into Green. Green to Edwards. Gets it back to Turner. Now Green to Edwards. Nice little passing play here. Can we find an opening? Chaplin could be through. Chaplin is through and does what he does best. And that's coming off the bench to get a goal. Corner Chaplin makes it 2-0 to the Terriers. Lovely build up again. And a really great finish. Well, that should surely do it then. A really nice passing move. Davis into Connor Chaplin. Takes his time and then drills it home. 2-0 to the Terriers. We had a very bad start to this game. We picked it up. We lead by two. And surely now the first leg win is confirmed. And there it is. Final score here in Austria. RB Salzburg nil, Huddersfield 2. I wanted the win. I wanted the away goals. And we got both. Delighted with that. 2-0 to the final score. We didn't play especially well in the first half. But really turned it around. Great win for us. It's been a very dramatic episode with so much going on and this game did not fail to disappoint either. RB Salzburg had a lot of shots, particularly in the first half, but they were so wasteful there. Finishing was really poor and in the end it came down to who was more clinical and that was us. We win it by two goals to nil. Delighted with that. And uh, for man of the match, I've got to say, I thought Jesperson once again was excellent. Got the assist for our first goal, getting involved in the build-up. Lovely cross as well. And like I said, expect this guy to be on the pitch a lot this season. I like him a lot. Only 16 years old, potential to be special and impressing very early on in season three so that will end today's episode of the Huddersfield Town career mode guys we're a big fan of you for watching I really hope you have enjoyed it if you did enjoy today's episode then please do consider leaving a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and they really help the channel out as well uh, much love to you all have a fantastic day enjoy the Champions League football tonight and I'll see you for the next episode of the Huddersfield Town career mode where hopefully we'll make a couple more signings with a lot more money in our budget very soon thanks for watching much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode very soon bye